Hey, I'm Andre from Rush Sports, and I'm going to run you through the difference in brake pad compounds. Over here in the workshop, you'll see we've got displayed the three different brake pad compounds that Formula manufacture, starting from the left being the sintered, then semi metallic, and finally the organic, which is available with two different backing plates. The backing plate being the material to which the braking compound is bonded onto. The organics come in an ergol backing plate being a lightweight material as well as the regular backing plate. Starting with the sintered brake pad, your sintered pads are great for high heat applications. It's a much more robust braking surface meaning that it will last for an extended period of time but with it being much harder you do compromise slightly on the initial feel on the brakes. Sintered pads are a great choice for any gravity inspired rider as they can maintain the heat much more consistently than an organic or semi-metallic pad. They are also great in the wet because of the hard wearing compound. What you will expect from a sintered pad is a feel in your brakes where the initial grab and power of the brakes is not excessively high but as you pull into the brakes a bit harder the curve of the power increases drastically making these your first choice for downhill application. Moving on from sintered is the semi-metallic compound. Now the semi-metallic compound has a mix of your sintered as well as your organic. So it's a slightly harder compound than your regular organic but not nearly as hard as your sintered. If you can imagine this is obviously going to be a far more versatile brake pad compound that you can use in the wet. It's going to last a little bit longer than your organics. It's going to be great in the dry and your braking curve on this is going to have a better initial grab than your sintered and your graph will flatten off slightly afterwards. So as I say a great mix between the two. Moving on from the semi-metallic is your organic. Your organic compound is perfect for cross country or marathon racing where typically you are braking in areas where you are not carrying a large amount of momentum you are rolling at slightly slower speeds, your bike and your rider are a lower overall mass than a downhill rider so your, your momentum is that much lower. Your braking graph and organic pad is a much higher initial grab. As you touch the brakes you will feel that there is much more power at your disposable right as you grab the lever but that tapers off slightly as you grab the brake more aggressively. So this is an excellent compound for someone who is looking for short responsive braking. The thing you need to bear in mind here with your organic compound is that this will wear out considerably quicker than something like your sintered. Looking at noise on disc brakes and this is something that guys ask us about all the time. In dry and dusty conditions your softer pad is always going to be the quietest. In wet, extremely muddy conditions, I would say probably your semi-metallic is going to be the quietest. Your sintered you'll find is still quite hard and your organic is simply going to wear out too quickly. So if you're wanting to quieten down your brakes, look at your organics in dry conditions, semi-metallic and wet conditions. But if you're looking at a great all year round brake pad, that will outlast anything and give you extremely responsive braking irrespective of the speed at which you're going then your sintered or metallic compound is the best guy to go for. Last thing to point out when you're looking at brake pads is it's incredibly important to prepare your disc rotor when you are changing your disc brake pads. What you must remember is that there is a huge amount of friction between the pad surface and your disc rotor and over time this can leave small pieces of your braking pad material embedded in the rotor itself. 
So it's incredibly important when you're changing from one compound to the next or simply an old brake pad to a new one that you clean and prepare that rotor surface so that whichever brake pad you're putting on has a clean disc rotor that it can then bond with. The other thing that's important is bedding in your brakes correctly. Now, the harder the brake pad, the longer the period is in which the brake pads take to bed in. As an example, an organic brake pad, you can probably bed it in within two meters of trail. A scented brake pad, on the other hand, in dry and dusty conditions, could take an entire 20 kilometer ride before the pads are working optimally. The process we always try and follow in terms of bedding brake pads in is to build as much heat into the brake pad as possible but over a slow and consistent period. What we see a lot of guys doing far too often is screaming down the parking lot, jamming their brakes on as hard as they can and what this does is it radically increases the temperature in the brake system and that's not what you're wanting to achieve. You're wanting to slowly but consistently build heat into your brake system. So the method I find that works the best is if you find a flat parking area where you can ride in a loop, grab your brake slowly, pick a nice low gear that's easy to pedal and as you pedal around probably for five or ten minutes apply more and more pressure to your brake levers and what will happen as you apply more pressure there's obviously more friction, more heat and your brake pads will be bedded in beautifully for your next ride.